We're now going to hear from Mr. R.S. Sharma, the chairman of India's Telecom Regulatory Authority. Hello, Mr. Sharma. Hi. And thank you very much for coming. You're here as part of this uh, week of meetings of the focus group for digital financial services. And well, let's talk about the perspective of India. Huge population, many people who don't have access to financial services. Uh, what do you think is going to change and, and to what extent will people be able to access now that the technology is changing at a very fast rate? See, let me uh, say this. There are two major barriers to financial inclusion. The first is the inability to prove one's identity because you, many people in India do not have formal ID documents. And the second one is actually the cost of transactions. What has happened is that India has a characteristics that the bottom of the pyramid would have very low value, of course very large volume of transactions. So unless you make these transactions cost effective, it will not be sustainable. So these are two major barriers and now of course uh, identity problem has been solved by Aadhaar, which, which basically has issued thus far 950 million identities to more than 1.2 billion out of 1.2 billion population. And the second one is that now we have the, the you know, 1 billion plus mobile connections and mobiles could be used as a very effective instrument of transactions, which will actually reduce the cost. So, so these are two barriers which, which to some extent have been resolved by India. But regulation is often held up as a barrier in itself. You're the chairman of the regulatory authority. Uh, what for you are the main difficulties in this area? I really do not see any difficulty now. Uh, what has happened is that recently Reserve Bank of India, the financial regulator of, of in India, has uh, given license to 12 payment banks. And these payment banks are largely telecom players. Now these uh, players have the experience of conducting digital transactions of very small value. Uh, for example, the, the top up value for a mobile recharge in India today average is about 6 US cents. So that being the case, these people are quite experienced in providing these kinds of digital services. So I see that regulation recently because of this license to payment banks has really worked towards a, a real financial inclusion of the people. And what about security and the, the consumer protection experience? Uh, is this area, digital financial services, is this something in which the majority of the Indian population uh, have trust now or is there still some reticence? So the very fact that uh, India today has 1 billion plus mobile connections is a proof of, and of the fact that Indians are pretty good when it comes to technology. You give them technology and they adapt to it. Similarly, I think that once you create an architecture of financial transactions which are as easy to do as making a phone call for example, then of course you have the architecture in place and, and it should be possible and that should not work as a barrier to do the transactions. As to the question of security, I think the very nature of these digital transactions because the authentication is, is absolutely secure and it is biometric uh, many a times if in case you want to have larger value transactions otherwise mobile can work as, as one of the factors of authentication and therefore uh, in this scenario I think it's a pretty safe uh, and, and non-repudiable kind of transaction which, which can be done. Uh, and technology again helps in reducing the cost. What's going to change in this area? Uh, will we be seeing more uh, merchants accepting cashless payments uh, via mobile devices? Well, what, are you, what are you seeing in terms of the technology over the next few years? See, my view is that India has got two verticals. You know, people often talk about India's cash addiction which means you know people use uh, cash more and there are two verticals to that one is the uh, you know the the people who want to hide something and they want to do some tax because they want to avoid taxes and another vertical is the vertical of rural poor people who has no who have no problems in doing a cash uh, cashless transactions provided you provide an opportunity for that and what i feel is that the this kind of banking the digital frugal banking is really going to change the way people in rural areas transact. Uh, a poor person would certainly like to save money and if he has access to easy banking, his neighborhood uh, grocery store owner is the mobile banker, then he could go and deposit money there and cer certainly again when he goes to buy uh, stuff next time he can pay through mobile uh, you know, peer to peer transfer. So therefore what I see as happening is that in the days ahead 
uh, there will be huge uh, spurt in the low value, large volume, uh, cashless transactions taking place in the rural India. Okay, so huge changes afoot in India Absolutely. already. Uh, so what is the added value of you being involved in this international process here at the ITU? Well, I think it's a great effort of the digital financial services, uh, you know, this group which has been created at ITU and, and uh, whatever deliberations I had today in the morning, uh, I had, of course, this is my first time to participate in this, but, but what I see is that there is a concerted effort uh, to kind of learn from each other's, you know, experiences and, and we are certainly there to uh, participate in this process. Uh, India has done uh, a lot of work in the identity space, in the transaction space. We have now uh, what is called a unified payment infrastructure uh, interface. Uh, what it means is that uh, there is an architecture which is interoperable, which is open uh, and based on open standards, which allows uh, any, uh, you know, any kind of address to any address transactions, any bank to any bank transactions. And that is something we'll be very happy to share with the DFS group of the ITU. Well, thank you very much for coming to talk to us today and thank you very much for coming to Geneva to take part in this process. Thank you very much. You're welcome.